Amen. Today, I, I want to start, I'll call it a series, and, and many times, you know, when I start a sermon, it's always a series, because the Lord uh, puts a lot in my heart, and I know that in the time that we have, I cannot speak the lot that the, the Lord has put in my heart. Um, and it's a series, really, that is close to my heart. Because I have realized um, that in life, it is very difficult to do anything by yourself. I, I've realized that, that in life, it is difficult to do anything by yourself. Of course, I know people who work alone. Of course, I know people who live alone. Of course, I know people who face life alone. But I have seen that in that struggle, I have seen that it is a struggle, and in that struggle, you know, there are certain things that you cannot overcome because you are all alone. Hallelujah. And, and many times others justify being alone as a time of solitude, solitude where they can be with God, and they say they are not alone, but they are with God. But I've also seen that God, when he created men, he did not want men to be alone. Amen? Am I talking to someone? So I want to talk about the power of partnership. And uh, I am sure in talking about the power of partnership, I'm going to talk about it uh, from the context of life, but above all, I want to talk about this leading up to the power of partnership in ministry. Now, many of you um, do not know me well enough, and um, to the point that you do not know how I grew up in ministry, and how I have developed over the years to be what I am today. And I think in, in, in sharing this, I will take you through a bit of that journey. Can I hear an amen? And by the way, me asking for an amen is part of partnership. Amen. This is us preaching this message together. This is us working together. Amen. Hallelujah. So, partnership, um, maybe let me make this statement. So, many of us, many of us, including me and many of you that are in this assembly today, English is not our first language. Amen. And even those that are English in South Africa, I'm sure the Queen will tell them that they are not English enough. Amen. So, so, therefore, many things that we think we know, when we do a deep dive, you realize I don't know it well enough. Amen. So many times when I talk about words that I think I know, I always consult, you know, the Oxford English Dictionary because it is closer to the Queen than all of us uh, because it comes from Oxford. So I look at it so that I can be able to have a better understanding and I can help my audience to have a better understanding of what I'm going to talk about. So when I looked at this word partnership, I understand it to be a noun. And um, it says that it is the state or condition of being a partner. It is the state or condition of being a partner. Also, a state of condition of participation, association, or joint interest. So there is participation. You are not a partner if you are not participating. If you are not getting involved in that which your partner is involved with, you are not a partner. 
And it says also association. So it means that there is something that you and your partner are associated with or to. And there is also joint interest, which means that whatever the partner is doing, I am interested in what they are doing or the outcome of what they are doing. That is partnership. And in business, it says it's a type of business organization in which two or more individuals, they pull money, they pull their skills and other resources, and they share profit or loss in accordance with the terms of their partnership agreement. So in business, there is two or more people who either bring their money into the business to form that partnership, or they bring their skills, you know, so either they are both civil engineers, they bring their skills to work together in this partnership, or they bring other resources. I remember when I started a partnership, I had a couple of... Um, you know, laptops that I was not using at home. And when we started the partnership, I brought them into the partnership to work as resources in the partnership. And these people, then they share profit or loss. So all of us, when we start a partnership in a business, we want profit. But it also means that if you have a loss, both of you as partners are going to share in that loss. In the absence of such an agreement, a partnership is assumed to exist where the participants in, a, in an enterprise agree to share the associated risks and rewards proportionally. So many a times people enter into a partnership, but they don't sign an agreement. But there is an understanding that whatever risks and rewards that are received or achieved within that partnership, they're going to show, share them proportionally. And the proportion is really based about how much each and every one of them has put in into that partnership. I think now we understand that partnership, it's about association. Partnership, it's about having some interest, joint interest, it's about participating. And uh, finally, it's also about receiving rewards, if there's any, and uh, also sharing in the loss, if there's any loss. Hallelujah. And I want to believe from a church context that we enter into a partnership to build the kingdom of God where there is rewards, of course there will be challenges in the process because the word prepares us that it's not going to be bliss all the way. There is going to be mountains to climb. Hallelujah. And I'm sure there's many songs that speaks about mountains to climb. And a partner, on the other hand, it's a person who shares or is associated with another in some action or endeavor this is a sharer or an associate. And if I talk about a marriage, a partner, it's a person that shares in the marriage. Can you say amen, somebody? Now, why do we need partnerships? Why do we need partnerships? So an individual will do what we call a SWOT analysis. They will look at their own strength, their weaknesses, opportunities and uh, risks and when they do this then they realize that there is certain things about them that they are weak on that they've got weaknesses in certain areas and then they begin to realize that in order to achieve whatever goal they want to achieve they need to have strength even in those areas but there isn't such a person who's got strength in every area many people claim to have but the truth is they don't so then they seek a partner 
that can be able to give them strength in areas where they are weak. And they seek a partner that they can be able to offer their strength in the area where the partner is weak. Many a times partnerships don't work when you've got two people who are exactly the same. Amen? And if you go to African proverbs, there is many proverbs that covers exactly that. That in Venda they say, um, Bombili adzuli muinamuti. Meaning you, can have, you cannot have two bulls in the same crown. They are going to fight every day. And I'm sure even in many other languages, you have similar proverbs. Can you say amen, somebody? Now, we look for partners to cover our weaknesses. Amen. And we look for partners to enhance our strength. You know, when you excel in something, you look for a partner that is weak in that because when you excel, they are able to say, great, you are such a great partner because you are able to bring out the best in me. That's partnership. And when we talk about bringing the best in you, it's not about you um, gaining new strength. It's not about you great, gaining new wisdom. It's really about you operating in the things that you do best. And the other one appreciates because they are not able to operate in the same way. Hallelujah. Can you say amen, somebody? That's the need for partnership. So we need partnership so that we can be able to cover ourselves. We need partnership so that we are able to cover others. Now, when you look at the Bible, and um, we can look together in the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Genesis 1, 26. And the Lord said, let us... Can you underline the word us? Let us create man in our image. You can underline that word our. Let us create man in our image. Already in that scripture, you can see that God is in some form of a partnership. Amen? Amen. People will tell you that there is no I in partnership. When us is spoken, it means that it is not an individual, it is a multitude, there is more than one, and God says in our image, which means he is not alone, there is others that are similar to him, but not the same as him. Amen? So, God also works in a partnership. When you were created, no wonder me and you don't look exactly the same, but we are the same. Because I look like one of those that was with God when God said, let us create man. And you look like the other. Amen. Hallelujah. So God works in a partnership. Creation, the work of creation was a partnership. Now, you can ask, what does that mean? We begin to understand that God is a trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The three are God, but the three are personalities, different, distinct personalities. You can separate them, but yet they are one because they are in a partnership. They've got one interest, and that interest is that you will prosper in your life as long as you are in the kingdom of God. They work together to bring you up. They work together to make you aware of the things that you are weak on so that you can have enough wisdom to understand that you need other people around you who can be able to pick you up. Hallelujah. And if you look at the development of Christianity and the development of the kingdom of God from the beginning of time, 
you will see that God has never called a man alone and never put other men or women next to them for them to be able to fulfill their calling. You cannot and will not. And maybe I'm going to be a bit harsh. You cannot and will not achieve that which God has created you for if you are going to do it alone. You cannot and will not. Maybe today you say, I have achieved this, I've achieved that. Let me tell you, it's still not yet enough if you're doing it alone to what God has intended for your life. Can you say amen, somebody? That's the challenge. That many people, because they are skilled, many people because they have knowledge, many people because they are learned, they think they have it all until they realize when they meet someone, that they don't have it all. But when they are alone, they think they have it all. Amen? Hallelujah. I remember as a young man, um, in my school, I used to be what I called the best. I used to be what I think was the best. People used to say I'm a genius. And maybe at some point I used to believe it. Hallelujah. Until reality um, happened, and I was, um, after matric, I went to a college in, in Swaziland, and that college, um, it's called Waterford Kamshaba, which means it's all of the world in one place. Students from across the globe. And there was this other young man from Swaziland, and I remember, you, you know, when we grow up, when people use, uh, you know, four eyes, ne? We, 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 we have this thing that they are nerds. You know, there's something about them that doesn't seem to be normal when it's normal, okay? I'm not picking on you guys who are wearing uh, glasses here. I I'm just telling you how we grow up, okay? And this young man, one thing that was astonishing about him was that he knew more things than I know. And really, I came to see and know that people who thought I'm a genius is just that they have not met one. Hallelujah. Because this young man, Becky, I was his name. Really, he knew everything there is to know about anything. And I've, I, I found that astonishing. And, and I used to ask myself how, because I thought I knew some stuff. I thought I knew things but he was just on another level. This is when you begin to realize that you need others in your life. Can you say amen, somebody? So he became a challenge to me, and I began to realize that there are certain things I do not know. I began to realize that there are some people who just have the ability to know things. But one thing that I know for sure of course, the Lord does give wisdom to men, and the Lord does give word of knowledge. But one thing that I've realized is that anything that anyone knows, either they have studied or they have heard. Amen? There is nothing that you can know out of the blue, if I were to use those words. You know something because you have heard about it or you have, or you have read about it. So you need to have an interest to know. Without the interest, you'll never know. Amen. The other day I was watching some video of a, of a young boy, probably what, nine, saying some stuff that was deep. And my wife said, no, 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 this boy cannot say these things unless he had someone talking about it. Amen. I'm not going to tell you what he was saying. But he was talking about a partnership. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you say amen, somebody? So really, partnership is about working together. Partnership, we see it in God, in the Trinity. When God created man, he said, let us make man. He was talking to the other part of the Trinity. So we see God having ordained partnership from the beginning of time. Now, the greatest partnership that people are aware of, it's a partnership of marriage. 
because that seems to be the easier partnership that we see, that we can call out. If we read in the book of Genesis 2, verse 18, and the Lord God said, it is not good that men should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Verse 24, therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Now we see that God, having made one man, Adam, and this man was moving around in the garden, he realized that this man needs a partner. This man has some weaknesses that will make him fail in many things that God had intended him to do. And he said, I will make him a helper because it is, it is not good. So let me tell you, without a partner, there are certain things that you can never be able to achieve. When God says it is not good, it means that it is bad for a person to be without a partner. It means that there are certain things you cannot achieve. There are certain things you cannot do. People will tell you that many people have certain prejudices. And you need a partner to be able to make you aware of them. And I like verse 25 in as much as when we read it, we may think of nakedness in terms of not wearing anything. But I want to believe that they were both naked, they were both vulnerable, and they were not ashamed because there was someone next to them to be able to close their vulnerability. That's partnership. You don't have to be macho in a partnership. You only have to bring your part. Amen? In the partnership, you bring your what? Your part. And you don't have to worry because the other one will also bring their part. That's partnership. And you don't have to be ashamed because your part is going to be good enough for the partnership. But your part alone, it will never be good enough. Can you say amen, somebody? That's the challenge I want to give you. That bring your part. And when you bring your part, and I bring my part, our parts are able to make something complete, something fulfilling that people can experience. But for as long as it's only a part, people will see it for what it is, which is what? A part. But when parts are together, people do not see parts, they see what? Whole. Can you say amen, somebody? Hallelujah. That's the challenge I'm giving you today. Bring your part to, to other parts so that whole can be created. That is partnership. Can you say amen, somebody? And the Bible says they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed because everyone was bringing their part. They didn't have to be ashamed of their part because when they bring it into that partnership, it becomes something complete. It becomes something tangible that someone is willing to put money on. But when you are all alone and you are only a part, it will be a waste to put money to a part that will not be used onto something. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you say amen, somebody? So marriages prevail when two individuals realize that they need each other. God said it, it is not good. And that relationship prevails because you begin to realize that you need each other. 
the two becomes one. Completeness happens when you partner with someone. Can you say amen, somebody? I think today I'm going to stop here. And what we understand is that each and every one of us have weaknesses. And God, when he said it is not good for Adam to be alone, is because he realized he needs help because of some of his weaknesses. And he gave him this partner to be able to close his vulnerabilities. And we also see that God also worked in a partnership in the Trinity. Different personalities, but one. And we also know that in a partnership, you are going to share in the risks, and you are going to share in the opportunities. You are going to share in the profit, and you are going to share in the losses. Now, I know many people that come out of partnership because things are not working out. You don't join into a partnership for profit. You join into a partnership to share in everything that the partnership is going to embark on. Hallelujah. And let me just close by saying that when I started ministry as a very young man, I was still at varsity when I started in ministry, when the Lord, when I received the Lord Jesus Christ, he spoke to me and said, you need to be a teacher of the word. I was still a young man, I was still at varsity, I was still trying to figure out my life. But I had a relationship with the Lord, and he really pressed this in my heart. And I remember at the time, I only had one view of where I needed to minister, which was a home view. And then I started getting involved and getting involved, it means that I was not alone. I was with what? With others. There is no involvement when you are alone. You get involved because there are others that are already doing something. And I developed in ministry always as a partner. I've never done ministry as a soul, and that's me. I'm all that. I can do all things. No. It is only Christ that can do all things. And I worked with many ministers of the word of God, many who are called, and I've raised many as well who are called who did not know that they were called because no one ever gave them an opportunity to partake. What? Partake. That's partnership. To take part. And today I believe with all my heart that ministry is never for one man. Even my Lord Jesus Christ, when he started his ministry, he called how many? He called 12. Never alone. Called 12. So I'm here to say to you that whatever you do, whatever you embark on, Whatever you may have a desire to do, the greatest thing you can do for yourself is to find others that are interested in the same thing. Many a times you can use them as stepping stone, you can use them as sound boards, but the fact that you are working with others is going to enhance you and what you are capable of doing. And today, I just want to plant the seed. As I'm going to continue with this series, and really, it's about building the kingdom of God. One soul at a time. 
It's about building the kingdom of God. And I want you to take part. I want you to bring your part. Because I believe that your part, it's a part of this huge puzzle of the kingdom that no man in their lifetime can never fully comprehend and understand. Even today, the kingdom is still being built. And there is no one that can say, I have seen it all and I know it all. If they do say that, they are making a greatest mistake of their life. We only just need to bring our parts. Can you say amen, somebody? When we do, we'll truly understand how great God is because we'll begin to see that he has already placed around us many things, many people that we need in our lives to be able to achieve the goals that God has set forth for us. When we do, we will see how great God is. That there are people different. You know, sometimes it's people that annoy you. And you know why they annoy you? Because they are bringing the best out of you. If you are with people that doesn't make you feel otherwise, then you're not in a very good partnership. They are not bringing the best out of you. Can you say amen, somebody? Let us stand up as I'm going to pray. And maybe you're there at home and you're watching this message. The challenge I want to give you is you need to bring your part. When you bring your part and I bring my part, guess what? The Lord is able to make something beautiful out of those parts. Maybe you might, think your part, you might think your part is not good enough. But let me tell you, when you bring it to my part, you will see how good enough your part is. I want to pray with someone today. Maybe you are already in a partnership. It could be marriage, it could be a business partnership. And you've been contemplating getting out of the partnership because your partner drives you crazy. Because they don't seem their part don't seem to be good enough for what you need. Maybe it's you, and I want to pray with you today so that God can be able to give you wisdom enough to see your need for that part, your need for their part. That you can be able to understand that whatever you have, it can never be good enough alone. That you need others for it to be great, for it to make sense, for it to be able to achieve that which God intends for you. That is going to be my prayer for you. That you need to understand that two are better than one. With every head bowed, if this is you, you can just raise your hand can just sense the spirit of the Lord in this place wanting to minister to someone. I can just sense that someone has been hurt because of the partnership. I can just sense that someone does not want to enter into any other partnership because of their experience of their previous partnership. And I want to pray with you for healing. I want to pray with you. Thank you, Lord, for those hands. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, I speak healing. From the head, Lord, I speak healing that you will be able to mend that broken heart. God Almighty, 
because it is as a result of the partnership that someone is had today. When you have ordained partnership to assist, to help, to strengthen, to grow, some people have lost so much because of the partnership. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will give them wisdom, mighty God, to learn out of their previous partnership, but if, even more, my God, for them to understand that they do need partners. Because as they bring their part, their part will never be good enough alone, that it needs other parts for it to bring the glory that you have intended for it to. Lord, I give you honor, Lord, I give you praise that as I'm starting this series around partnership in ministry, around partnership in business, around partnership in marriage, that many people, Lord, will open their hearts to take part. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your grace and your mercy. And above all, I pray that the Spirit of God will be our partner in this that it will be our teacher in this, that he will be able to open our eyes, that we'll begin to see what others are bringing on board that we were not able to see in the past, that we'll begin to appreciate others that are around us because of what they are bringing to this partnership. In the mighty name of Jesus, but above all, Lord, that you will build your kingdom, that you will use each and every one of us to build this kingdom one soul at a time. All for your glory, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, spirit of power. Thank you, spirit of authority. That you can give us an opportunity to be at this table and to partake in this table and to receive thy bread, your word, in our lives. And I pray that our lives will not be the same in the name of Jesus. Can everyone say amen? Hallelujah.